A major art fraud ring was busted recently in Canada, accused of peddling hundreds of fake Norval Morisot paintings. That made some people wonder about similar art they own. Charnel Anderson covers the Northwest for Ontario Hubs, and she joins us now from Thunder Bay on what to look for in authentic paintings. Hello, Charnel. Hey, Jan. All right, so you looked into how to authenticate a Norval Morisot painting. First, take us back. How did that come about? Right. So, you know, I got curious after I heard news of the arrests and, you know, that the police had seized somewhere around a thousand pieces of phony artwork um, attributed to Norval Morisot. You know, how do you know what's legit and what's not? Um, and then it was kind of serendipity. Uh, I got an email from a gentleman named Dwight who had seen my previous reporting. Um, I did a story on the theft of a Norval Morisot painting uh, from Confederation College in the 80s. And so Dwight reached out. And in his email, he explained that he was born in Madsen near Red Lake and that his dad had a furniture store there uh, in the late 1960s where Norval would come and trade his paintings for some craft paper. <laughs> Excuse me. Um, and so his dad got a number of Norval Morisot paintings this way and he had given them to his sons. And so that's how Dwight had got his. And he's held on to them for a few decades. And, you know, he's thought about selling them. But in order to do that with, of course, the news of the arrests, um, you know, you need to establish that it's a genuine Norval Morriso painting. And so that's sort of how this all started. Of course, the arrest that you mentioned happened earlier this month. Obviously, a lot of, uh, a lot of sort of media coverage on, on, this, uh, on this particular case. But for people who don't know who Norval Morriso is and his, and his work, who is he? I mean, yeah, so he's arguably the most famous contemporary Indigenous artist in Canada. And, you know, even if you haven't heard his name, you're probably familiar with his style. Um, he's credited with founding the Woodland School of Art, which is characterized by these bright, vivid colors and thick black lines. Um, it's, you know, a style that's really synonymous with Indigenous art, especially here in Northwestern Ontario. Um, and so, you know, when Norvell started out, he wasn't that well known, but eventually he was discovered by an artist named Jack Pollock. And he went on to uh, become the first Indigenous artist to have his work shown in a mainstream art gallery. And today he's known as the Mishomis or grandfather of contemporary Indigenous art. And of course, uh, the late Norval Morso passed away in 2007. But of course, his legacy continues. I want to talk a little bit more about uh, the police and, and their investigation, because this is quite complex in terms of the people behind it. What, what did police learn about who was selling these uh, fake Norval Morso paintings? That's right. So according to the OPP, there were three distinct groups producing um, and distributing fake Norval Morso artwork. Uh, the first group allegedly emerged um, around 1996 in the Thunder Bay area. And that started with one person who, according to police, recruited a full assembly line of painters uh, to produce these paintings. And the second group uh, was also based in Thunder Bay. And they allegedly began their operation around 2002. Uh, police say that this group involved one of Morso's nephews, um, and so this group allegedly sold their paintings online to people around the world. Uh, and then there was a third group <laughs> operating in Southern Ontario, started around 2008. Um, and this group allegedly provided false information for provenances. Uh, they produced phony uh, certificates of authenticity and appraisals for these fake paintings. And they also distributed them to um, unsuspecting members of the public, according to police. You know, none of these allegations have been proven in court, but the hearings have begun for those who've been arrested. And, you know, I'm pretty eager to see how it all unfolds. I, I, one question for you. How many paintings do police estimate are out there that are not uh, are not real? So, you know, the number is unknown, but, you know, there's estimates that there could be as many as 6,500 uh, fake uh, artworks oh. attributed to Nora Elmore, So. All right, let's have a look at two pieces that Dwight Barnes is trying to authenticate. This is the first one. Tell us what we're looking at here. Yeah, so this, um, it appears to be an owl. You know, it's got the thick black outlines characteristic of Norvell's style. Uh, the colors are relatively muted and, you know, there's only two of them. There's brown and yellow, but it is reminiscent of Norvell's earlier works where the colors are toned down, you know, relative to his later work. And then our next photo... Yeah, and so the second uh, painting um, features what looked like to be three crows or ravens. Um, similar to the last painting, it's got muted colors, uh, this time uh, yellow and a deep uh, green or blue, looks green um, and brown. And it looks like it could be painted on craft paper, which, again, is 
a material that Norval used in his earlier works, um, you know, before he got famous and had access to these more mainstream materials. Now, in both those photos, there are some characters uh, on the bottom of the images. Uh, what does that say? Yeah, so that's um, Norval Marceau's signature in syllabics. I believe it translates to uh, Copper Thunderbird. All right. Now, why is it that Morisot's art is so difficult to authenticate. You talked about some of the features there in terms of craft paper. There's a very specific way in terms of, of how he paints in some of his drawings. You talked about the thick, sort of thick uh, borders around some of the, the imagery there. Why is it so hard? Yeah, I mean, it's an interesting question. And it's something that I asked Carmen Robertson, who is an expert on Norval Morisot. And she explained to me that Norval really operated outside of the mainstream art world. You know, he was a prolific painter who created upwards of a thousand pieces of artwork. And, you know, before he started showing his showing and selling his work in uh, art galleries, he was living in Red Lake, where he would create his pa creative paintings and then go around town selling them to people or offering to trade them. Um, you know, as Carmen put it, he really operated within this traditional notion of reciprocity or gift giving. And so many people, especially people in Red Lake, ended up with Norval Morisot paintings this way, really without any formal provenance or certificates of authenticity, which is, you know, what art dealers look for when they're trying to uh, authenticate a piece of artwork. So that's part of the reason that, you know, it's been a challenge to authenticate his artwork. Um, in terms of Dwight Barnes, do we know, I know he was trying to see if his pieces were authenticated. Has he gotten any word back yet as to whether or not, he, in fact, he does have some, some, real, some real pieces? Yeah, not yet. No, he's still waiting to hear. He has reached out to um, an authenticator, uh, but, you know, this is a process that takes some time. So um, he's working on it, but we don't know yet. All right. And in terms of, you know, you had estimated about 6,500 people potentially could have some, some Norval pieces that are not real. Um, what are the steps for owners uh, who might be looking to learn and find out that their painting is in fact real? So it's actually pretty straightforward for people that own the paintings. What they need to do is um, find an appraiser. And ideally, that's someone who is familiar if, with, if not an expert, in the type of work they're getting to evaluate it. And this work is a little more complicated for the appraisers, right? They're going to want to see the work. Um, they want any provenance, provenance that you may have. So that's either paperwork, certificates of authenticity, that sort of thing. It could even be like a photograph that shows um, the painting in a room on a certain date. Um, family stories could work. And so they'll look at the provenance and then they'll look at the artwork itself. They may even do some some kind of science, you know, uh, chemical analysis of the paint. Uh, they can do radiocarbon dating on wood. And um, so these methods taken together um, are really what um, can allow them to, you know, figure out whether it is a genuine piece of artwork or if it's a fake. Charnel Anderson. Thank you again for another great story. Very interesting story. I'm sure there will be plenty of follow-ups to this one. Thanks so much. The Agenda with Steve Pakin is made possible through generous philanthropic contributions from viewers like you. Thank you for supporting TVO's journalism.